Morning, my name's Simon. Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social. Uh, welcome to the sunny south of France and welcome to the launch of Suzuki's 2023 GSX 8S. Welcome to the first few miles on Suzuki's 2023 GSX 8S and from here on in I'm going to call it the 8S for several reasons. The first one is my voice is going which will be a blessing for some people so this is going to be mercifully short and also because I can't keep saying GSX 8S without cocking it up or sounding like a robot. I don't know why they don't just call these bikes Fred or Vera make it much easier to say anyway so you wait ages for a bus and then two come along at once we wait ages for a new Suzuki and we get two in one year although cynics might say that it's actually one engine and one frame but it is two different models we've had the V-Strom 800DE and now we have the GSX 8S and uh, Suzuki have got a, a bit of a reputation to uphold in the well, for want of a better word, budget middleweight market. If you think back to the mid-90s and the Suzuki 600 Bandit, once upon a time, the most popular and most populous bike in the UK. There were more of them on the roads than any other model. And then, of course, in the late 90s, there was the SV650, a uh, bike that built up a beloved, slightly fanatical fan base, and which is still going a quarter of a century later. You can still buy a brand new SV650. Um, in fact, in, in some ways it could even be considered a bit of a rival for this bike. Anyway, here we are with the brand new AS. Now, if you want to know the ins and outs of the engine balancing uh, and a bit more detail about the engine uh, internals, then watch the V-Strom 800 DE video elsewhere on Bennett's YouTube channel. Because my voice is going, I shall be very brief and skate through the spec of, uh, of the... AS, uh, for those of you who don't want to watch videos about V-Stroms. It is a 776cc, 270 degree, parallel twin, making 82 horsepower, uh, 8,500 RPM, or 8,600 RPM, and making 58 foot-pound of torque at 6,800 RPM, which spec panel experts will note is some nine horsepower peak less than Honda's new Hornet, a bike against which this AS is going to be compared a lot, if not by me, than by everybody else. Um, and it is slightly more torque, and it is delivered in a completely different way. Uh, this engine is a very, very different thing to the Hornet engine, which is, in a way, if you like, quite a conventional power delivery, uh, as in so much as it gets progressively stronger as it climbs up the rev range. Uh, whereas, as we discovered on the V-Strom, this engine is very much weighted towards the bottom end. It's before, and it is very lively at the bottom end. It's interesting now, I've been in a position where I've ridden the Transalp, the Hornet, the V-Strom 800, and now this is my sort of last go on this particular engine. And the difference is stark. In fact, it's got even more bottom end than the V-Strom 800. Um, the engine is in a slightly different state of tune. Hardware is the same, but the software is different. So the ECU has different settings, it's got different fueling, and it has different gearing, to be fair, because it's, well, it's, uh, it's not a massive off-road rear wheel. It's the 17-inch rear, and it's a, on a 180-55 tyre. So, um, so, yeah, so it's shorter geared than the V-Strom. And so it feels really punchy in the low gears really really goes for it but anyway i'll talk all about how it feels later on for now we'll just concentrate on the spec so yeah that's the bare bones of the power that's the bare bones of how the engine's configured all down this, this bottom end i mean look we're in fifth sixth gear now this is what 80 miles an hour and there's plenty left to come actually it feels quite healthy at the top end as well it's a really good engine i did bang on a bit on the v-strom video about the vibes 
and uh, and that engine did vibrate quite a lot I think this engine does not yeah you can kind of detect where that secondary vibration is but you can't feel it this is a smooth smooth engine uh, I must you know it's got yeah look I can't feel any tingling at all perfectly happy to sit on this for a, for a length of time let's rattle on we have uh, like the V-Strom, we have the air boxes behind the engine rather than downdraft on the top of it, which is kind of interesting in itself. It, I suppose now that engineers don't really have to chase performance, this engine makes 82 horsepower. But Suzuki could easily have tuned it to make 90 or 100, but they chose not to. Uh, and part of those choices are down to the fact, well, it's got to be A2 compliant at some point. Um, but also it means they're kind of free then to not chase horsepower and not have to put the airbox in a downdraft position under the tank and take up tank space. So it sits behind the tank. Uh, you chase the air filter under the seat, so it's quite easy to get to. Uh, and on the V-Strom, that gives some Suzuki room to put a 20 litre tank on it. Uh, sadly, with the GSX-8S, it's still a 14 litre tank. It's not the biggest fuel supply in the world. Um, what we've got here, let's have a quick look at the uh, 38.7 miles per gallon is the average. Not been hanging around to be honest, been through some fairly uh, hectic riding in the centre of Nice and then some fairly hectic riding out here in the countryside. So that's going to be good for, I think there is a fuel range on this bike, but I'm not sure how much fuel they put in it. Let's have a quick look. Uh, oh, there we go, we saw it just then. Yeah, it says it's got 81 miles left on the tank. Um, so I think if you get 120 before hitting reserve, you're doing fairly well. You could probably get 150 before it runs dry. But you wouldn't want to be doing that. So yeah, let's get into the chassis then quickly. Um, same frame, same basic frame as the, uh, the V-Strom. Different subframe because well, the clouds are getting a bit dark up there. It's a detachable subframe, which is a bit of a feature. I like it. Suzuki have spent, um, spent a bit of extra money on the fasteners to hold the subframe um, and it's a nice aesthetic look it also means the back end of the AS is uh, completely different to the, the V-Strom back end and then it's funny actually yesterday at the uh, technical briefing Suzuki didn't even mention the suspension not once it's uh, and again compared to the V-Strom which had fully adjustable showers I believe these are KYB forks and shock no adjustment beyond preload at the back and they do feel less plush, less supple, and a bit more, a bit more budget than the V-Strom. However, for the rest of the class, and there are quite a few bikes in this class, most of them are unadjustable. So it sort of comes down to how you like your unadjustability, how you like your basic budget shots and forks. I have to say, this does sort of, uh, it does feel a little bit harsher than the Hornet. But it doesn't feel as soft and spongy as the Hornet. So again, it's uh, it certainly doesn't detract from the riding experience. So we've been pushing on a little bit through some of these country roads up here in uh, south of France. And the bike hasn't misbehaved at all. It's been very, very, very good. In fact, the steering, I'll just quickly talk about the steering of the bike. It's, uh, the bike is a bit heavier, it's 202 kilos, so it's about, I, don't know, I think it's about 8 kilos heavier than the Hornet. It's about 18 kilos, I think, heavier than something like Yamaha's MT-07. But, um, let's just nip through here as well, follow the lead rider. But the weight's nicely distributed, and to be honest, the Honda was almost too agile. There, was, there wasn't enough weight on the front, and it was really, really quick steering aided by the fact it had a 160 section rear tyre. Whereas the 8S feels much more conventional. You throw it into a corner and the front end feels much more planted. You've got more weight on it, got more feedback. You can really feel what's going on. I prefer it, I have to say. Um, and then rattling through spec, what else do they? Didn't even mention the brakes either, which maybe it's because they're so uh, such sort of a standard issue four-pot radial Nissin calipers. But again, it's worth mentioning because uh, they're really good brakes. Certainly stop this thing. Right, and uh, well, it's getting a bit cold now as well. What's going on? I came here for the sunshine. Not for uh, not to get a bit chilly. 
So what else have we got? Let's go through some more spec stuff. Let's talk about seat height. About eight, 10 millimeters. Again, it's kind of middle of the range for this category of bike. The bike feels a little bit wider. It's a bit more solid. It's a bit more substantial than something like the Hornet and the MT-07, both of which have a slightly, I don't know. I don't want to say they're like toys because they're not, but then there's something just a bit more substantial about the 8S and substantial not in a bad way. I mean, sure, if you're pushing around in a gravelly car park, that extra 10 kilos probably isn't welcome. But on the road, it just feels a bit more planted. It steers with more stability. Uh, and so, yeah, not necessarily always a bad thing just to have a little bit more planted mass. Again, a good bit of a, a good bit of pace on here. It feels like we're shifting a bit. And then it's getting to the spec of the bike. It comes with an up and down quick shifter, like the V-Strom. And, uh, and very enjoyable it is too. I think it's something that all bikes should come with as standard. Something it doesn't come with as standard is the centre stand. And I'm pretty sure you can't get one. No one's not listed in the Suzuki accessory manual. So I think yeah, if you want to adjust the chain on one of these, you're going to have to buy yourself a paddock stand. I can relax a bit now, coming into town. And I am running out of voice now as well. So I'll quickly tell you about the other stuff. It has, again, it's all familiar stuff. It's the same clocks as the V-Strom. Really, really nice. Really crisp, clean layout. Always visible in any lighting conditions. A really simple switch gear operation. Uh, you know, I wish it had a mode button for the rain. I wish it had a rain button. So you it would change the traction control and it would change the throttle setting at the same time. Bit of a first world problem having to push a button three or four times. But just once would be good. Um, yeah, up and down quick shifter, really nice clocks, really nice switch gear. Uh, that's about, <laughs> and, uh, we could talk about, you know, it's got three levels of traction control, you can turn it off. Unusually, if you turn the traction control off and then kill the ignition, when you turn the ignition back on, it's still traction control off, uh, which is fairly unusual. Um, and so I'll comment on how the bike feels and its agility and it's and a bit more on the engine performance when I get to the conclusion, when I've done a few more road miles. But I'll just quickly mention the price and I'll mention its rivals. Where are we going? He's indicating to stop here. So price is 8,155 of your English pounds, which there's no getting away from it, is expensive. It's 1,156 pounds more than the uh, Hornet, which actually by a strange coincidence, the Transalp is exactly 1,156 pounds cheaper than the V-Strom 800DE. It's almost like it's not a coincidence. Um, and you know, it's about 600 quid, maybe over 600 quid more expensive than the MT-07. Uh, I think it's more expensive than Triumph's Trident 660, you know, that's, uh, I think that's a few hundred quid less. It's about exactly the same price as KTM 790 Duke. So it is at the top end. But I guess at this level, you have to decide really if it's something you want to pay for how the bike feels because Suzuki does feel different to everything else and has got a really really nice bottom end performance I know I keep banging on about bottom end sorry about that but uh, it is one of the most outstanding characteristics of the bike anyway I am going to do a bit more riding and then I'll come back to you later on a bit more of a conclusion about how this thing feels. Well, there we are then. That's the end of a fairly hectic day's ride on Suzuki's 2023 GSX-8S. 
here in the south of France. And uh, yeah, when I say hectic, I mean hectic. It's been, um, there's been some Gallic overtaking going on in town. We've done a lot of town riding through, through Nice in some traffic. And we've done a lot of fairly hairy, hair and scare and fast stuff up in the mountains. So um, it's been a good illustration of what this bike is capable of. Um, so in the last couple of months, I've kind of, I've, I've had my fill of parallel twins. I've ridden the Honda Hornet, I've ridden the Transalp, same engine. I've ridden Suzuki's V-Strom 800DE. And now finally, the final piece of the jigsaw, the final piece of the puzzle is the AS. And I have to say, and you've got to trust me on this, Suzuki have saved the best till last. This thing is a real surprise. I know we shouldn't come into these things with preconceptions about how bikes are going to feel. The idea is you empty yourself of all your bias and let the bike fill you up as you ride. Um, but I had a preconception. Because I'd ridden the V-Strom, I kind of thought this engine, with all its bottom-end bias, which I keep going on about, was going to be a little bit wasted at the top end. I thought maybe the build quality is not going to be quite so good. Maybe there's going to be some design elements to the bike that I don't quite like. Uh, I have to say, all those uh, prejudices have been dispelled. There's not an awful lot about this that I don't find really, really good fun. So let's start with the engine. Uh, and again, a lot of this is sort of cross-referenced with the Hornet. So uh, forgive me for that, but it's kind of the most immediate and obvious choice to compare this bike with. But the MT-07 counts as well. And as I said in the commentary, there are a load more competitors. But anyway, the thing about the engine, so yeah, it has got this really good bottom end. I've just ridden it through town. I can get it down to 20 miles an hour in top gear and it'll still pull, which is quite impressive. Admittedly, there's a bit of transmission lash, but you know, that is very, very flexible. The way this thing grunts off the throttle and goes, it's not like the V-Strom. The V-Strom has got that bottom end heft, but this thing feels more lively. I mean, it's geared differently, so, so maybe that's part of the reason, but it has also got this different tune with the ECU and the fuel injection settings. But yeah, man, it really does leap off the bottom end in the way the Hornet doesn't. Um, yes, it hasn't quite got the top end, but to be honest, I didn't miss it at all, and I was revving this thing out. Uh, so yeah, engine performance is really, really impressive. It suits the bike and it just feels, it feels like there's so much there. Like I say, it's easy to forget that this is actually, you know, it's bigger than a 750, so it's bigger than the old GSX-R 750. But anyway, really, really good stuff. And then in terms of the chassis, the handling performance of this thing, the way, um, the way the front end feels really plugged in, and again, in a way that the Hornet almost doesn't. It's got this 180, 55 section rear tire which is much more conventional sort of, in a sense, than the Hornet's 160-60 rear, which gives it that kind of really agile steering. I mean, it's almost too agile. This thing feels planted, it feels solid. Again, if you look at the video, the way the thing's tracking through corners, and you're sitting there thinking, yeah, this feels plugged in, it feels right. Um, again, really, really impressive, and it's really not what I expected. Rodding position-wise, Again, the Hornet is quite aggressive. You're quite compact inside it. It's a small bike. It's physically diminutive. This thing has got a bigger bike feel. Yes, it's heavier, but it's also kind of, it's larger somehow. It's more serious. Um, and the running position isn't quite as aggressive. It's just a really, really obvious stance. Um, so that's a good thing. Seat is really comfy too. Again, the seat is comfier than the Hornet. The Hornet didn't feel, it has that sort of soft compressive feel. This, like the V-Strom, is really nice. It's wide where it needs to be and it cups you, it keeps you in position. Again, you're kind of riding this thinking, I wish it had a bit more of a fairing and I could, you could do some serious miles on it. Speaking of serious miles, tank range, not so great. Um, when we filled it up, it was showing about just over, I think, 100 miles on its sort of remaining range. Uh, and judging by the fuel consumption, which is around about, I think I was getting an average all through the day of about 38 miles to the gallon, which is not brilliant. So I think if you're getting 120 from this before you hit reserve, you're doing all right. You might be able to stretch it out to 140 if you're gentle, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a shame really, because they've moved the air box down here. You can see it just here. Um, you're gonna get to the air filter under the seat. It has given them the opportunity to make this tank bigger, but they haven't done it. And if we talk about styling, that's the other thing that I didn't think I was gonna like. When I saw this bike at the, uh, at the bike show, I kind of all my eyes were on the Transalp, which is a pretty looking thing. And then next I was looking at the Hornet and this I was kind of thinking, oh, it's another Suzuki. I know what it's going to be like. I know what the finish quality is going to be like. I was wrong. 
The finish quality is really good. The details kind of leap out at you. I do like the detachable subframe. I like the fact that these bolts have been specially selected to have a visual appeal. It's a bit like Triumph in that respect, but it looks nice. And the fact the subframe is a different color. Again, it's a bit Triumph-esque, but it's a good thing. And then just admiring the alloy of the foot peg assembly. It's just stuff that you look at, stuff that you touch and you see. It looks nice. Things like the, uh, the spring on the tank flap. They've increased the spring rate, so it's actually a stiffer spring, so it has more satisfying click to it when it shuts. That's a little, tiny, tiny little details that you never really think about. Same with the rear foot pegs. They've got this really nice center detente to them. They have a real nice click. And the black finish on the, across the dash is really nice too. So anyway, the, the, you know, the actual finish quality of the bike is a lot higher than I thought it would be. So yeah, best of last. I've had a great day razzing around on this thing. Um, and for me, 8,155 pounds on the road, 1,100 quid, first sight, that makes it out of the Hornet. You know, the Hornet is so much cheaper. Yeah, um, but you have to kind of ask yourself, you know, if the performance of the bike is worth it, if the fact that it's got a quick shifter is worth it. And without thinking about the price, I definitely prefer this to the Hornet, I've got to say. Just add the price in as well, start to get a little bit trickier. Add in some of the, some of the competition, like the Triumph Tri uh, Trident, like the MT-07, like indeed the SV650. Starts to get pretty crowded in there, the 790 Duke. It's gonna be an interesting group test if we can compare them all together. But on the basis of what I've done recently, yeah, I'd definitely take the GSX 8S. I wish they'd named it something different though. Keep calling it that, gets a bit difficult to say. Anyway, I'm sure I've left loads and loads of stuff out. Please leave a comment down below, ask me a question, I'll come along, I'll answer it if I can. Um, and uh, yeah, don't forget to read the full review on bikesocial.co.uk, uh, which will be a little bit more, co more coherent than this old rambling. And uh, all that remains for me to say is, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, good, good. My voice is going a bit, but yeah, it's all right. Voice, yeah. Too much talking. Eh? Too much talking. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Too much talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs>